reversible cell injury. When cell injury is mild to moderate, the injured cell may revert back to normal. It is referred as the reversible cell injury. The biochemical and ultrastructural changes in the reversible cell injury are as follows, in which the first one is a decreased generation of cellular ATP. Living cells require continuous supply of oxygen for the synthesis of ATP and the ATP is derived from aerobic respiration or oxidative phosphorylation in the mitochondria. And to maintain constant supply of ATP, cells may switch over anaerobic glycolytic oxidation especially in the ischemic conditions. ATP depletion to 5 to 10 percent of normal levels will induce cell injury and the depletion of ATP is caused mainly due to decreased supply of oxygen and the nutrients or maybe because of the mitochondrial damage and chemical toxins. In the ischemia, aerobic respiration and glucose availability are compromised further leading to faster and severe injury of the cell. And the second event is the intracellular lactic acidosis. This intracellular lactic acidosis mainly causes nuclear clumping called as pycnosis. So if you talk in detail about this process, aerobic respiration by the mitochondria fails due to low oxygen supply which is followed by a switch into anaerobic glycolytic pathway for the requirement of energy by means of substrate level phosphorylation which results in the rapid depletion of the glycogen and accumulation of the lactic acid lowering the intracellular pH inside the cell. This causes pycnosis which is called as nuclear clumping. And the third and important event is the damage to the plasma membrane pumps. So whenever there is a damage to the plasma membrane pumps, there will be a hydropic swelling and other membrane changes. So here, if you talk in detail about the process of hydropic swelling, the lack of ATP interferes with the generation of phospholipids from the cellular fatty acids which are required for the continuous repair of the membrane. This causes damage to the membrane pumps operating for the regulation of sodium, potassium and calcium. So what happens if there is a failure of the sodium potassium pump because of the decrease in the ATP? There is intracellular accumulation of sodium and efflux of potassium. So accumulation of sodium in the cell lead to cellular swelling which is the first manifestation of the reversible cell injury except for apoptosis. And second one is the calcium pump failure. Excess influx of the calcium ions which is mainly caused due to the membrane damage and influx of the calcium into the cell particularly into the mitochondria causes swelling of the mitochondria which leads to deposition of the phospholipid rich amorphous densities in the mitochondria. So increased calcium efflux from the mitochondria into the cytosol activates calcium dependent enzymes that is phospholipases, proteases, endonucleases and here ADP is responsible for the cell damage. It also results in calcium induced apoptosis either by activating caspases directly or by increase in the membrane permeability. And next important event in the reversible cell injury is decreased synthesis of proteins. Decreased synthesis of proteins is mainly seen due to continued hypoxia where the membranes of the endoplasmic reticulum and the Golgi apparatus swells up. By this what happens is the ribosomes are detached from the rough endoplasmic reticulum and polysomes are converted to monosomes that are dispersing into the cytoplasm. So by this, let us talk about what are the morphological features of the reversible cell injury. Cellular swelling is the first initial manifestation of the reversible cell injury and the cytoplasmic vacuoles that is intracellular water accumulation that is the hydropic degeneration called as cloudy swelling is also initial manifestation. And if you talk about the ultrastructural changes, plasma membrane shows blubbing, which is an outpouching from the cell membrane to accommodate more water and loss of microvilli. And mitochondrial swelling and small amorphous densities are seen. And endoplasmic reticulum swelling and ribosome detachment is also seen. And one important point what you need to know over here is the formation of the myelin figures which are derived from the cell membrane damage. 
So by this, we completed all the biochemical events and the pathological events which are seen under reversible cell injury.